Hi YouTube souls, it's Columbus Ruscio and welcome to another book review. This time is the time for Familia Spirits, the first installment in the Cotton Family series by Nicole Canfield. I will put all the information to Nicole Canfield's um, stuff in the description, description box down below. Familiar Spirits, what's this book all about? This book follows Lucy Cotton as she goes back to her hometown after her grandmother passed away and uh, she has to deal with a lot of uh, supernatural stuff that is coming from all the secrets that her family has. A family that is traced back to the Breeding's Witch Trials. This book was insanely good to read. It was very well written, it was very rich, it was really mysterious, and the amount of research on historical witchcraft and folk magic put into here is amazing, which is no surprise if you know Nicole Canfield, also known as Kitty the Dreamer, and her YouTube channel, and all the amount of information that she provides. Also, I believe here there are some personal experiences part in here, but I'm not sure. It's just a guess. I will do the good things, bad things list and go for it. So the first thing that is great about this book is that it's a classic witchy story but with uh, some differences the wind is blowing strong um, with some differences some new stuff which makes it classic but kind of unique it drinks from several sources i would say but i would say that it mainly drinks from three main sources one would be the lives of the Mepha Witches by Andreis and Nicole, if you're watching this, you can correct me if you want, but I see some resemblances here, uh, which is not a bad good because, a bad good, which is not a bad thing because Andreis is an amazing writer and I have read the first book in the Mepha Witches trilogy so far and it is an amazing book. So it's a very good resemblance. And this book is actually, <laughs> It's actually one of my favorite on witchcraft, fiction on witchcraft, uh, but I always have like a favorite on each topic, uh, book, se uh, series, um, films, whatever. And this is kind of fighting for the first place in the witchy fictional book with uh, The Wishing Hour by Andreis. And the other two sources would be historical witchcraft and folk magic and folk stories and other myths and legends. Another good thing, and it might sound silly, but I loved it, is that it contains the shape-shifting spell of Isabel fucking Gaudi. And I worship her. So that was like, oh. And another thing that I'm thankful for to Nicole is that the book isn't filled with witches don't believe in the devil nonsense that usually pagan authors used to fill their books, their fictional books with. Um, certainly many witches don't believe in the devil, but many other witches do believe in the devil and I'm tired of the patronizing of the pagan side on the other side of the spectrum of witchcraft. In the end of the book, the moment of the initiation of Lucy Cotton is so fucking epic and intense, along with some other stuff like when the uh, levitation scene that you know the spectral attack on her and all the stuff but the initiation was so intense and it triggered my spiritual side or my mystical side 
so much that I compare this moment to all the life-changing moments of fiction to me on my on a personal level. Life-changing moments like when my heart just jumped in the witch, the film The Witch, when she was bargaining her covenant with the devil uh, and Black Philip spoke for the first time or when Princess Moana finds the Pale Man in that kind of netherworld that she goes to in Pan's Labyrinth. Those were life-changing moments for me in which a pop culture stuff changed my spirituality to some level for the intensity and reality of the moment despite being fiction and this was just like those moments. It was amazing. Some parts, some conversations, some moments are epic. I know I will say this word very much but it's the only word that I know in English to describe this. It's epic and uh, there's one line in the initiation scene particularly that I would really like to read you because it's like the best line in the whole book. It, it influences me on a spiritual and, and, and a mystical and esoterical level. My ancestors gazed at me from each corner of the cemetery. They were my undead witnesses. It turned out I wasn't alone for the initiation. A witch is never truly alone. Wow. And this is a good thing, but also a bad thing. It leaves you really, really thirsty for more. Not thirsty, hungry. It leaves you hungry for more. And that's why I want to read. I'm looking forward to reading the next book, which is Hungry Spirits. Yeah. The other cool thing that it has is that it has a very, very southern flavor. Uh, South American flavor and I really really enjoy that and it also kind of tapped into Native American myths as well but yeah it is very cool you know that that Southern American slash slightly Creole but also British because the family is from Britain like it is very cool very very cool and I really, really enjoyed that. And it is so realistic and well informed that is one of the reasons that I love to review this book so much. Because one of the reasons why I started the book reviews and film reviews was when I was focused entirely on paganism and witchcraft. And I wanted to review books and pop material that, you know, kind of tapped into the spiritual realm even if they were fictional and this book really really does that so but on the other hand of things it also have some flaws on or whatever that I want to mention because I'm very honest about it but it doesn't mean that this isn't one of the greatest books on fictional witchcraft and not so fictional if you look closely at it, um, that I have ever read and had the pleasure to read. The first but thing that I would say is that the first part of the book, the first half maybe, is of a very slow pace and it was hard to me, not to read, but it was hard to continue like. It was, at the beginning it was just a hated girl in her old town and that's a classic in many stories in many supernatural stories so it's not a flaw but it's an inconvenience that many books have okay to me the worst part and i have to tell you nicole i don't know if it was your decision or the publishing house's decision or whatever but the format to me is terrible i'm sorry um, no pages, I like to know how many pages left there are. Um, 
and the chapters were like very similar as say for the number and the name of the character and I don't know it was very confusing I would have I would have liked it to have at least the pages numbered at least that I was about to say the vocabulary because it was very complex and rich but that's not a problem that's my problem because I am an English learner and it was very difficult for me to understand the whole thing but for native speakers it would be awesome and it is awesome indeed because I have heard the opinions of others and also if you are familiar with uh, witch lore and folk stories, some some parts or some scenes may be predictable, but that's not Nicole's fault. I mean, it is based on folklore, so what would you expect a new take on folk stories? So these are the only flaws or not so cool things that I could find in this book and I really really had to scratch into it because the only flaw that I found was the format, the not numbered pages. So in conclusion, it is an amazing book, a really really good book and it's a first published book so it is great to have a first published book being so insanely good. Nicole Canfield is a very talented writer, she has a very rich vocabulary, she has a very deep sense of research and knowledge about what she's writing about, um, she knows a lot and she like really really channels into a very creative way and the folk stories and beliefs and old myths into something fictional and great and I am very passionate about fictional witchcraft and pop culture witchcraft and this is one of the most realistic because the thing is that it is it, it gets to be really realistic about witchcraft and the supernatural it's not like this fantastic unbelievable flame throwing hands of witches it's it is very realistic the contact with spirits everything it is it is great and I can only recommend this book and I'm really really looking forward to reading the next one and actually like a week ago or so I asked her when it would be published because I want to order it as soon as possible so my mark for this book is eight out of 10. 8 out of 10 because it leaves you in the best part. So I think it will be better in the next book. I really really think that and hope for that. And for the little flaws, especially the format of the book. And that's why I don't give it a 9 or a 10 out of 10. But it is an amazing book and you think about this as if it was a 9. But since I believe it will be even greater in the next book. I don't want to give it a 9 and then have nothing to to mark higher in the next books. So yeah, it's um, 8.5? Whatever. Nicole, please release the next one already. I want it. Um, I will keep an eye on Nicole and her next publications because I really want to read her more. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Any doubts, questions, requests, please uh, in the comments down below as well or PM me. Like if you like the video or the book or dislike if not. And if you want to see more book reviews on fictional supernatural stuff, which is usually the genre that I read, please subscribe to keep updated. Thanks for watching guys, may the gods and spirits watch over you all, and bye.